Good morning. This is video number nine in the professional development series focused on online teaching and learning, student to student engagement. In this video, we look at two principles, principles number two, modeling, and principle number three, management. So let's get to it. We know that that's our core model, which we want to achieve, and we're going to focus on the strategy of modeling, which says that we need to explicitly and subtly illustrate collaborative and co-constructive engagement practices while being the co-participant within a community of learners. So we have to, as teachers, model these type of behaviours for our students to build their student capability to do this type of work online. What does a post look like? How do you present content? How do you reply? How do you demonstrate something? How do you post a question? All those things actually need to be taught. Students need to be taught how to do that online. In the previous video, we identified that a key principle is to sustain communication over the life of an online learning sequence. Modeling as the second principle establishes that online discussion is guided by and goes through the teacher with peers in a facilitated synchronous forum. So the idea here is that the, that conversations and dialogue go is guided by the teacher and actually goes through the teacher as a peer, as a peer participant in the online space. The teacher does not just provide the content and an answer for a student, but they model how to respond, how to be a contributor, how to request information, how to extend an idea, how to reflect, and how to reason. And this helps develop that healthy dialogue and metacognitive processes. Now, the type of questioning obviously directs the type of answer. And what has been found online is there's a greater tendency to respond at the cognitive level of the question asked. So this means that when online, teachers need to be a little bit more cognizant of including those higher order thinking questions in order to stimulate the intellectual discussion and development. And this is not as straightforward as we, as we know because disengagement is harder, sorry, easier online. So if a problem is posed that the student doesn't understand, disengagement occurs. So the trick is to actually just ask the question that will tease the next idea out. So it's an ongoing process of modelling and having the wait time so a peer may come in and ask that question instead of yourself. So the idea here is there's that modelling of the critical conversation actually as a co-participant, not just the provider of all the content, but participating within the dialogue. Um, also, value-based responses for justification and how to respond in these sort of ways will help reduce that disengagement as well. So students need to understand that um, Often when you're doing value-based value responses, there's quite a significant call for the justification of that and the ongoing dialogue around that. In these um, online environments, we also have a lot of social and emotional responses in the emojis that we use, which is a critical part, that social part, as we know, is a critical part um, of responding and teachers being a participant by doing those as well needs to happen. So there are some steps evident in the literature that um, both the teacher and the students can help to model because everyone's a teacher in this space and for, to facilitate that discussion. So not so presenting ideas and questioning, focusing the discussion, summarising the discussion, confirming understanding, Diagnosing misconceptions, identifying areas of agreement and disagreement, seeking to reach consensus understanding, encouraging, acknowledging and reinforcing others' contributions and drawing in participation 
prompting and discussion. And I think that last one, drawing in and maintaining um, through modelling, is one of the things that um, is critical for online engagement and student-student engagement. The COI model that we refer to in this video series has been introduced to emphasise the teacher's role in structuring, timing, balancing and showing modelling um, practices to help that critiquing um, contributions. But critiquing is never going to happen online. And I'm not saying critiquing as in negative, I'm saying crit critiquing as in justifying of um, of ideas and elaborating um, but that sort of type of that high level work is not going to happen until we have that sense of community and um, that relationship that sits around it and that's what the uh, community of inquiry model um, emphasizes so students are to serve as models to each other and that is that key part of that reflection reflective practice and bringing the work that happens online into the classroom one thing, and I just want to mention it quickly, is to avoid that avoid that temptation to post the right answer, if there is one, um, and being the teacher who does that. So it's better for a student to make a suggestion or a post and having that feedback practice model cycle happening so that students um, don't expect a right answer for, um, for work in these spaces. These these spaces are really about deconstructing ideas and presenting different ways of understanding because they are good illustrators of what's happening in um, our students' minds. So we'll now move on to principle number three, which is management. Management is about establishing protocols and procedures for targeted learning activities within different digital platforms to enable student engagement practices. We know that engagement, when we talk about student to student engagement, it's relevant to teacher to student, student to teacher, student to student, student to content and student to the tool or interface. We also understand that we're trying to decrease um, that distance of understanding or the distance of misunderstanding, as we've called it, um, and perceptions through those increasing in dialogue, having structure to the environment and also increasing the capability of students to be autonomous. Now, that again is related to um, the theory of transactional distance. So management becomes a critical component of helping these, this decrease in misunderstanding through the building of student to student engagement. So let's have a look through what some ideas are presented, present, have been presented and found in the literature on managing student engagement. The first one, you regulate by setting routines and procedures. So you establish requirements. So if you want students to post in a forum, for example, then you ask for one response with two comments from peers. So you establish early um, to build capability those sort of type of parameters for engagement. You might have, um, you might model some protocols um, and set certain boundaries and limitations for when you want things done um, or when you want um, activities to be started and finished so that students have some boundaries for when they'll be using these tools. You set clear instructions, and we know this type of thing, but clear instructions are both short, sharp, and um, visual, like say numbers, um, is also very important. So for example, um, you identify the content that you have in the online spaces for the students to use um, with what the content is about and so uh, and what its relationship is to other things. You might note the length of time of a video so the students know how long it's going to take to watch that video. So it's it's the identify identification of everything online so everything is clear and there's clear pathways through the learning so module one module two module three things like that clearly explain the purpose and reasoning for the task so why learning in this way which will also build students 
to learn in this way. That, I think, is really, really critical. Why am I doing this online? What will it bring to me that is valued to my learning experience? Those sort of reasoning for learning actually needs to be discussed with students. Wait time by teacher for students to resolve their own conflict. So that time lag is very important. It's that thinking time, the watching of the peers' responses. That needs to happen so that um, it, if um, you become a participant in that, but you also don't control that and actually build students' capability to resolve conflict um, or to present an idea through justifications. But that work, again, can be done classroom-based and online. And I think that's very important. These reasoning whys and building hows are, are critical in this space. Um, make it fun. Um, have some sense of social presence and conversational chat. Th those ideas are very strong in the literature when we're using these online environments. Uh, collaboration. People talk about collaboration. It's one of those terms that are bandied around uh, quite a lot um, for online. But that means when you're managing collaboration that you set the requirements and set the tasks. But a really key idea is to establish roles. This is me. This is my role when I'm in this group and I'm doing these type of activities for this period of time. So that time frame matters. And this will be the next activity that follows on. They, we also talk about this idea of cooperation uh, and they often say that establishing frameworks or guidelines to what actually cooperation means in this space and understanding um, interdependence is different from individual accountability and group goal setting. So activities that help develop cooperation within groups should include those interdependence, so student success depends on each other, the individual accountability, that responsibility for one's own learning and for helping other members of the group, and interactions that pr promote achievement of group goals, so that group goal setting and encouraging that understanding of what is effective cooperation. And the last one there, uh, aspects of flexibility and choice. So establishing opportunities for students to choose and monitor their own order of activities. Now, that's an interesting idea in the sense that you may follow a certain pathway uh, or create a certain pathway for students to follow online, but if they are given some sense of choice in that space, they often engage more and engage um, and engage with exactly what you um, are supporting them to do. So, for example, you might have a number of different activities that they can choose two or three to do, and that will then move them on to the next. So the idea is in these spaces to have a certain amount of choice available, but you manage the structure and and um, create that choice opportunity for the online activities. Group dynamics. So allocate, allocation of group, taking time to develop um, the actual sense of the group is very important. So alloc allocating groups for collaborative work should not be a random process. Um, and and if, all teachers know that, but there is a certain criteria of why you're putting students together. And that should be also discussed with the students. We're doing this task, you know, for whatever reason, and I want you to work in this group together for this reason. So the reasoning, again, is very important. Take time, and we know that the virtual groups may take time to reach a functioning stage of cohesion and cooperation. It's not going to be fast. It's not, they're not used to working in this way as they are in classrooms. So not all inter or interactions will be positive and conflict can arise at any point in discussion, task or synchronous or asynchronous activities, but there are um, opportunities for discussion to be had around that. Don't jump straight in to solve or resolve group conflict. Try to encourage discussion dynamics um, and questioning and also uh, 
provide scaffolding and support for students to be justifying their answers and building on each other's ideas because that is critical for learning in these spaces or we're going to get that disengagement. So um, encourage evaluation of peers' point of view and use supporting materials to do that with so that if someone does make a disagreement, they're supporting it with justification. Uh, Self-supporting opportunities, so shared and discussion, dis open discussions of question and answers so everyone is aware and establishing strategies if you need help go and do this go and do this so you've got that um, effort regulation and that time management opportunity so you're trying to manage um, their interactions online but you're giving them boundaries and limitations and support to do just that those you're providing those strategies so in summary Management focuses on organisation of the content, the tools, and also organising the discussion, and that's the critical point. So students feel able to make choices, but they also feel supported when they're engaging online. Thank you.